Hello there, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Kimball, founder of Kimball Charting Solutions. Welcome to Your Daily Five. Today is uh, Wednesday, September the 16th, and I, as summer's wrapping up, I hope this finds everyone doing well. I want to spend a couple of uh, the, the first segment uh, today kind of talking two-thirds of the Dow theory. You know, Charles Dow created this decades ago, the idea of how the Dow transports, industrials, and utilities behave. You like to see them uh, work in unison to confirm bull markets. So I just kind of wanted to update uh, two thirds of that, which uh, is a third of it is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And uh, you know, there's the old adage of uh, uh, if, uh, if a gap is created on a chart, it'll be filled. You know, the, the question always is, is, is when? So the theory is all gaps will be filled. And you can see the Dow on this uh, Dow Weekly chart uh, left a very large unfilled gap. And then the March low took place here. It's rallied back up to there. And so again, this is a weekly chart. So three weeks ago, you can see the gap was filled. Uh, a lot of buyers came forward and then enough sellers came in that we saw a reversal and then we've drifted a little bit lower, obviously, you know, not much. And so I think from a, a price and, and pattern perspective, this could be important that uh, there's a potential uh, rising wedge going on. We're seeing a little bit of weakness, but I think uh, the, the big key to this chart pattern is, is roughly, you know, the, the 274, five-ish uh, area, which is obviously just uh, a couple of percent, you know, below, you know, here. So key resistance coming into play in 290 and key support coming in about 274. But the Dow theory, uh, some of itself would get a little bit of a concerning message if uh, the Dow itself broke below 274. On the flip side, the Dow transports are, are trying to, uh, to do something even more positive. I mean, you know, the chart on the left is a, is a bullish chart as far as a long-term perspective. Uh, if the Dow breaks uh, above, let's just call it 300, obviously, that's a real positive signal. On the right, the Dow transports, and uh, you can see this uh, very large uh, percentage decline that took place. Uh, transports lost almost 50% uh, during the COVID quote um, into the March low. Very impressive rally taking place. Two or three of us on this phone call might be uh, ordering stuff online and having it delivered through transports. They're pretty busy. And so as we speak today, transports are attempting to break above. They're actually above this year's high, the, the highs of earlier this year, but now they're testing 2018 highs up here in the upper right corner. So uh, a positive message uh, obviously would take place from both of these. Um, on upside breakouts. Dow Utilities doesn't look uh, anything like these or not near as much strength, but I want you to pay attention to industrials and transports going further, forward. I want to turn the page to uh, the next few charts are going to, uh, my opinion, uh, uh, banks are uh, going to spit out one of the most important messages in years. And so this is a, a two-fold chart. The blue line is the uh, bank's S&P ratio overlaid with the S&P here on, on the lower chart. So the interesting thing was there was a bearish divergence prior to the 2000 high in the S&P and the 2008 high in the S&P before 50% declines in the S&P took place each of those times. So I kind of wanted to update, you know, where we're, where we are right now. And so we're seeing that there's a, uh, you know, these were two year bearish divergences before the S&P started rolling over. And we're seeing uh, another two year divergence taking place in the bank S&P ratio. And, and in actuality, the, this ratio, as you can see, is it's at the lowest price in 30 years. So uh, I, I like to call this a fish mouth pattern, uh, a very large spread you know, between the two. And something's going to happen uh, in a big way. Either the S&P is going to try to do a game of catch up with the banks or the flip side in an opportunistic side for the banks we're gonna see this uh, reversal and a narrowing take place in the bank ratio. And so I kind of wanted to update so the, the bank pattern itself. So this is the bank index, which is the BKX on a monthly basis. We're going back uh, several years, almost a decade, but I want you to kind of pay attention to the last five years the most of all. This was the high in 2015, around 80, before it dropped down to the 55 level a pretty decent haircut, but this was uh, resistance. It came into play as a support in Christmas of 2018. We had the rally into this year, which looks like a potential lower high or a double top, this large decline. But what the focus of this chart to me and the takeaway is what's been happening in the last several months. 
So line one is a five-year-old resistance line. And then also it's the 38, it also comes into play as a 38% retracement level. And again, this is a monthly chart. So you can see that banks have really uh, not made much net movement. Um, the bulls and bears would, in this area or sector would be probably frustrated because there's not much gains or losses that are taking place. But you can see almost month after month that buyers are trying to come in and they, they just tend to dry up, you know, buying uh, disappears. But on the flip side, selling is, is not driving this, uh, the index obviously, you know, much lower. So this is why I say, this is to me, one of the most important price points for years in banks. And uh, this is my 40th year in the business. And I've always liked the saying, so goes the banks, so goes the broad market. That's worked pretty, pretty well or been a pretty true uh, acronym over the over the 40 years, but so far, you know, of late, that's not been true. As you can see, banks are struggling, but the s and is very close to an all-time high. We saw transports were there. So I think really what banks do here is going to highly influence the two charts that we shared at the very beginning, which is the Dow Jones Industrials and the transports. So a, a way to watch this, you know, through uh, stock charts is to uh, watch uh, KBE. This is, you know, the, um, the ETF on the banks monthly chart, you can see the same type of price action that's taking place just below uh, key resistance levels. We're going to look at the same thing on KRE. Regional banks have been uh, weaker than the big uh, money center banks, but you can see that the price patterns are about the same, that 2015 resistance became 2018 support, and now it's been resistance again for several months. So again, to reiterate what I said is, I think banks uh, are at one of the going to send one of the most important price messages. Uh, a breakout obviously would be bullish for banks and the broad market, the Dow transports. If they, uh, they peter out here and selling uh, comes into play, that's probably going to highly influence the first two charts that we shared. We know, not telling you anything new, that um, uh, theoretically, uh, most often banks like to see higher interest rates. So this is the 10-year yield chart inverted to look like bond prices. So you can see in March of this year at one, and this uh, lower right chart is just a, bl a blow up or close up look of the blue shade, but at one, uh, it was hitting a 30 year resistance level. This is the largest bearish reversal pattern that this chart has made. And then you'll notice that uh, this inverted chart to look like bond prices has uh, again traded sideways for months and a key support level is in play here for yields. And so uh, what happens at two from a ripple effect, I think will have a lot to do with banks. And then with what the banks do will have a lot to do with the first two charts being the Dow and the transports. So we've, uh, we're all aware that the government's thrown out a lot of stimulus. The government's uh, only in debt uh, 20 some trillion dollars. So there's always concern of we could have inflation or we're gonna have higher rates. And so I think this whole puzzle is gonna come into play with what banks do here and, and also interest rates. And so to wrap up uh, today, I want to talk about a, a chart that I've been sharing with friends and customers for 17 years, and it's uh, about seasonal turn dates. And uh, I don't know why this happens, but I first discovered this in uh, the 2000 to 2002 bear market, that the first day of spring, everybody comes into play on March the 21st, the first day of fall on 921, and how many times key highs or lows took place within a few trading days of the first day of spring or fall. And so, you know, this took place here. And so the question is, is did it ever take place again? Well, you see that it took place several times in the, the financial crisis. And so I highlighted in red when the first day of fall was a critical price point over the years. Two years ago, uh, next week was the high in 2018 prior to a 20% decline. And then lo and behold, the exact low for 2018 was the first day of, of winter. And so now next, and excuse me, before we go on, the low of this year was the first trading day after the first day of spring. So as we wrap up today, just want to share that next week's the first day of fall. 
I, I think if I lived 100 more years, I wouldn't know why this happens, but uh, I wanted, because of the timing, to just go ahead and bring this up to you and, and just kind of ask the question, will the first day of fall be another inflection point, you know, for the markets, or, or will, be a, uh, will it be a non-event? Because sometimes it's just absolutely a non-event. So uh, I appreciate you, uh, your viewership. Uh, we're offering, a, this is my 40th year in the business, a 40-year special to Kimball Charting Solutions, and you can check it out at the address above. Thank you, everybody. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.